Coming up on 5-Minute News. Democrat Katie Hobbs beats Carrie Lake in Arizona governor's race. U.S. prosecutors argue Trump can't declassify records he claims are his. And Biden and Xi disagree on Taiwan, but seek to manage their differences. It's Tuesday, November 15. I'm Anthony Davis. Democrat Katie Hobbs was elected Arizona governor on Monday, defeating an ally of Donald Trump, who falsely claimed the 2020 election was rigged and refused to say she would accept the results of her race this year. Katie Hobbs, who is Arizona's Secretary of State, rose to prominence as a staunch defender of the legitimacy of the last election and warned that her Republican rival, former television news anchor Carrie Lake, would be an agent of chaos. Hobbs's victory adds further evidence that Trump is weighing down his allies in a crucial battleground state as the former president gears up for an announcement of a 2024 presidential run. Before entering politics, Hobbs was a social worker and an executive with a large domestic violence shelter in the Phoenix area. She was elected to the state legislature in 2010, serving one term in the House and three terms in the Senate, rising to minority leader. Carrie Lake is well known in much of the state after anchoring the evening news in Phoenix for more than two decades. She ran as a fierce critic of the mainstream media, which she said is unfair to Republicans. She earned Trump's admiration for her staunch commitment to questioning the results of the 2020 election, a stand she never wavered from even after winning the GOP primary. She baselessly accused election officials of slow-rolling the vote count this year and prioritising Democrat ballots as she narrowly trailed Hobbs for days following the election. The US Justice Department, in a court filing unsealed on Monday, accused Donald Trump's lawyers of gamesmanship for arguing that some of the documents seized by the FBI from the former president's Florida estate should be kept out of a criminal investigation because they are personal or privileged. Trump, who is expected to announce a 2024 run for the presidency today, has fought to keep material seized by FBI agents during a court-approved August 8 search at his Mar-a-Lago estate in Palm Beach away from investigators in their criminal probe involving sensitive government records stolen when he left office last year. The department's filing stated that Trump is claiming privilege over 122 documents taken in the federal raid. Prosecutors wrote that they should then be allowed access to nearly 2,800 other papers that they are currently blocked from reviewing as part of their investigation. Trump's attorneys argued in their filing that he can unilaterally determine that records are personal and that he does not need to provide evidence that he made that determination and that the decision cannot be challenged. The Justice Department wrote in separate filings that Trump cannot claim that government records are his personal papers simply by saying so or simply by the act of removing them from the White House. The department said Trump cannot assert executive privilege over any documents he has claimed as personal records because any such records must be unrelated to official duties. Prosecutors are looking into whether Trump broke federal law by taking the records and also whether he obstructed the investigation into the missing papers. U.S. President Joe Biden objected directly to China's coercive and increasingly aggressive actions towards Taiwan during the first in-person meeting of his presidency with Xi Jinping, as the two superpower leaders aimed on Monday to manage their differences in the competition for global influence. The nearly three-hour meeting was the highlight of Biden's week-long round-the-world trip to the Middle East and Asia and came at a critical juncture for the two countries amid increasing economic and security tensions. Speaking at a news conference afterward, Biden said that when it comes to China, the US would compete vigorously. But I'm not looking for conflict, he said. He added, I absolutely believe there need not be a new Cold War between America and the rising Asian power. 
While there were no watershed breakthroughs, the Biden-Xi meeting brought each side long sought if modest gains. In addition to the shared condemnation of Russian nuclear threats, Biden appeared to secure from Xi the resumption of lower-level cooperation from China on a range of shared global challenges. Meanwhile, Xi, who has aimed to establish China as a geopolitical peer of the US, got symbolic home turf for the meeting on a range of shared global challenges. The White House said Biden and Xi agreed to empower key senior officials to work on areas of potential cooperation, including tackling climate change and maintaining global financial, health and food stability. China and the US are the world's worst climate polluters, and their one-on-one -on -one climate contacts are seen as vital to staving off some of the most dire scenarios of climate change. Biden's first stop on his long overseas trip was in Egypt for a major climate conference. You can subscribe to 5-Minute News on YouTube with your preferred podcast app. Ask your smart speaker or enable 5-Minute News as your Amazon Alexa flash briefing skill. Subscribe, rate and review online at 5minute.news. 5-Minute News is an evergreen podcast covering politics, inequality, health and climate. Delivering independent, unbiased and essential world news daily.